So in today's video is going to be the ultimate FPV beginners guide to FR Sky transmitters. So we're going to cover how to bind them, how to configure them, how to make sure they're working perfect in beta flight because sometimes you could run into issues where it won't arm and you're putting the throttle but the quad is doing something else. So we're going to cover every single aspect of that as fast as possible but as detailed as possible and through all of these how to access each menu here. And they're all basically identical. It's just the button placement and what button does what is different. But the menu and the overall software, you can think of it as the Android. They're all basically running Android, but they have different joysticks to get through that menu. That's how you want to think of them to make things a bit easier. However, something we're not going to cover today is where to install your FR Sky receiver. That I'm hoping you kind of already know where to do that. And we're just going to cover the binding process, the configuration, the beta flight checking, and also how to enable the auxiliary channels for arming, disarming. We're going to cover all of that even in beta flight. So let's get started. Now, before starting, a word from our sponsor. PCBWay is one of the leading PCB manufacturers that I even use on a daily basis, not only to do my projects, but also some of the products that I've designed that's currently in the market, like the Drone Mesh VUSB, and I'm constantly using them for prototyping, and I'm also using their assembly services, and they also do have flashing services for specific hardware requirements, so it's a really great place to have your PCB manufactured or prototyped. All right, so we're gonna concentrate right now on the FR Sky X9 Lite Pro. This is the best budget radio out there. And this is actually my main driver. Even though I have all of these more expensive ones, this is the only one I'm currently picking up and I'd highly recommend for anyone just starting out. It is overall very great because the form factor is small from the sides, yet you get full gimbals and it's just overall a really pleasant device to use for an FPV quadcopter. And it has just been insane. However, the X Lite is very good as well. It has shorter gimbals, so if you like to play PlayStation, this would be absolutely phenomenal. The range are basically almost kind of all identical, except this one doesn't have an external antenna. And the QX7 was the all-time budget radio before the X9 Lite came out, so this is still a really great radio. There's the QX7 and the QX7S. I personally preferred the cheaper QX7, and I'll have all of these linked down below. If you could click those, those greatly support the channel. Now, there's one important aspect of your remote controller that you should know, which is your channel order. And that is something very important. A lot of people overlook and a lot of people don't know how to get there. And that's what really creates the most amount of problems when you go into beta flight and you're turning left and it's not turning left, it's doing something completely different. So let's get into the menus here. First, we'll start off with the binding process. So you want to boot it up, make sure none of these are switched down, it'll give you a warning and then you can just flip them all into the default switches. So now the first step to do on any of these is to create a new model before we go and bind. I'll also show you the X Lite, it's the same thing, it's just the button placement or the joystick placement is different. So on the QX7 you want to hold, you want to just, sorry, press the menu button once and then you want to scroll down, click on an empty one and create new model. And that'll create us a new model and select it, as you can tell with the star here. Then you can click exit. So right now we're in model 7. And on the X9 Lite, to create a new model, it's the same thing. You press the menu, and then with the, the little joystick here, or the roller, whatever it's called, you want to click on it, and then click create model. And uh, if you get this menu, just press exit. Ignore that. You don't need that. That'll screw everything up for you. So right now here we're on a new model. Here it's called model 8, and here it's called model 7. So the first thing you want to do is you want to bind your quadcopter. Now to bind the quadcopter, you want to go back into the menu again. So we're going to click the menu button here. And on this one, it's the center button right there. So we're going to click the menu button. And then you want to find the page button here. So here we have the page. So it's going to go to another page. And then we want to go into the setup page here, which is page number two. And the same thing goes for this one. This is the page and we are on the setup section. Now, before proceeding, I just want to show you the menu button and the page button on the X Lite because it's slightly different. And then, but everything else is basically identical and that's what I want to show you here. So on the X Lite here, what you want to do is you see the joystick here, you want to hold it to the right and then that's your menu for some reason. And then we would go down, click here, just click down on the joystick or we have to hold on the joystick and then create, create new model. Now we can exit out and now we are on our new model like these two. But how do you enter the setup page like we did on these is you would hold this down and then now we're again, we're in the menu. 
then you want to go to the right. So basically with the X slide, we, the page button is to the right. But however, let's just say we went down and wanted to go and bind it. We're in the setup page now. If we go to the right, we can't do anything. We would have to press the exit until this gets highlighted. Then we could start paging again. So that is the only difference between this one and the ones that we're currently working with right here. So it's all exactly the same pages. So we're going to be able to do exactly the same thing on both. Now, the first thing you want to do possibly is add a model name, which is right there. And obviously what you do, you'd click on that and then you can start choosing. We're going to call this one K and we're going to call this one B. And then once that, once you're done naming it, you want to exit. So, and then it'll highlight it all over again. Now it gives us the ability to move down. Now the next thing, we don't really need to do anything else on the setup page other than name and bind. So you can scroll all the way down, but I prefer to just scroll up. Cause if you scroll up, you can get immediately to the bind button right there. So now you can see we have the bind button into place here. And before you press this bind button, what you want to do is you would grab your receiver. You know, what I recommend, I'll have a link to every single receiver that will work on all of these controllers, which are FR Sky receivers. So my personal favorite is the XM Plus right here. It's super tiny. It gets really great distance and it's very pleasant to use and work with because it's small. There's also other ones I'll have linked down below. You can choose whatever one you like, but this one is the cheapest and it works the best. It can get you like three kilometers of range. So you'll be more than fine with this one right here. Now the binding process, let's expect that you already know how to connect everything, the S bus to what pad and the five volt in the ground. Now what you want to do before you bind is you want to hold the bind button and then apply power to your quadcopter. And once that happens, then the green and the red LED will be on. Once that's done now, your both of your receiver, any of the, these FR Sky receivers will be in bind mode. Then what you'd want to do, keep an eye on your receivers LEDs and then click on the bind then you should hear a sound like this. And the way to know that it has been bound is the LED would start blinking. Now, once it starts blinking, you can exit out of the bind, unplug the quadcopter, and it should be bound. That's it because it already blinked. And when you plug it back in, the LEDs should be green. And that means you're bound. And this is the same procedure on all of them, whether it's a QX7S or QX7, the X9 Lite, the Tyrannus X9, or the X Lite itself. They're all exactly identical and that's how they'll all work. The next thing is a very important step that a lot of people might overlook. This is very important to memorize so you know how your transmitter is sending the channels. So now we're on the setup. We want to go to the mixer page. So we'd want to go to the page again. And now we're on what heli setup. We want to go again. Now we're on the flight modes and now we want to go again. I'm just going to zoom in on this one here. We're just going to do one. So it's a little bit easier for you to follow along. You want to go to the mixer and what you see here is we have T A E R. This is going to play a really big role because default, if it's T A E R, it will not work on beta flight until you change something in the receivers tab, which we'll cover once we get into the beta flight. Now, if we bring my QX7 here um, and we page to the mixer tab, we see it's AETR. See, AETR. You want to remember just the first letters of these because you'll see these in better flight. So once you take a note of your channel order, this is what they call the channel order. Then we want to take a look at channel five, six, seven, eight, and whatever other channels we might want to use. Now, in the beta flight, what you might see is people telling you, oh, to set up auxiliary one for arming, auxiliary two for arming. Now, what those auxiliaries mean is anything above channel four. So basically, auxiliary one starts off with channel five. So what we can do is click on this, go to the source here, so we can set auxiliary one, which we'll take a look at in beta flight. And we're going to have it start blinking. Then you go ahead and choose whatever switch you want auxiliary one to be. So I'm going to press this one here and we can actually take a look at it change here. So that's good. Then I would press exit. So now I know that's my auxiliary one. Now, personally, it's a personal preference. I always set auxiliary one to arm. So I always set this one to arm my quadcopter. And next, I want to add, um, let's go to source again. I'm going to add a three position switch. This one here, this is going to be for my modes. So that's going to be great. So it changed to C and then I want to add a buzzer. So this would be considered auxiliary three and I would go to source, click on it, have it start blinking and then choose a switch here. So once I click that switch, it'll change. As you can tell, I like to press it more than once to confirm and then we could exit. And now we have basically set auxiliary one, two and three, but we haven't configured them in beta flight yet. So that's what we're going to do next. All right. So now we're going to hop into the beta flight. So before we hop into the beta flight, we need to check a couple things. One is if we install our USB into the quadcopter, does our receivers LEDs boot up? If not, then you're going to have to install a battery. 
However, make sure the propellers are off or you might just completely destroy yourself or hurt yourself and do something very bad. So keep that in mind. Make sure your propellers are off because it could just arm and go crazy on you. So currently this one, when I plug in the USB, my receiver doesn't turn on. So I'm going to have to also plug in the battery. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And we're going to hop into beta flight right now. If you saw that flash, that was lightning. And you'll probably hear it in a couple seconds. We have a huge thunderstorm. All right, so that's plugged in now. So what we need to do is hop into beta flight. Okay, so now we're in beta flight and you know, I'm hoping you know how to connect. So we have COM64, I'm connected now. Now, remember when I told you that my receiver, this one is T-A-E-R. So next thing we wanna do is go to the receivers tab. Once we're here, we see that my roll is very low and you know, I'm gonna try to throttle. This is obviously my throttle and it's doing rolls. And if we take a closer look at the quad down here, now I don't have any input and it's flipping like crazy. That means the channel mapping is incorrect because this is T-A-E-R. So if we take a look at the channel map here, then it doesn't say anything else, but you know, common sense would tell you to go to FR sky, but look, it's still AETR. If your drone is flipping like this, then what you'd want to do is do spectrum. And look, it changes it to T-A-E-R, and that's what this one is here, the channel map. And if we save it, look, now that's not doing anything. And now if I roll to the right, look, it's rolling. Throttle, obviously, it's not going to do anything. Yaw is working. And if we go back up here and take a look at this side, if I throttle up, yes, the throttle is going up. If I yaw left, yaw right, roll, I mean pitch, and then roll. So that's perfect. Now, also just something off a side note, if you see a channel down here, like channel 12 going crazy by itself, then that means it's RSSI. That means it's your signal strength. So what you can do is go to the RSSI here and set it up to like, if it was auxiliary 12, then that would be auxiliary 12. Now, this channel map is very important because this will dictate if, you're, if your quadcopter were arm or not. So you will fly or not, or even probably hurt yourself. So this is a very important step. So mine was a TAER. If I bound the QX7, which was AETR right now, um, then I'd have to go back to default AETR right there. So we're going to stay on TAER. That's just the, the channel map. So it can just come as two, either default. If it's, you click on default and save and it's still spinning, then go to the spectrum and it'll fix it. One of those two will fix it. Perfect. So now let's go to the modes tab or the auxiliary. So we can set up the switches that we set up earlier in our mixer. If we just go back to the receiver tab again, remember how we set up those uh, switches for specific channels. Now we set channel five to be this one right here. And if I click channel five here, we see auxiliary one jumped up. Now you can kind of count them. You see channel one, two, three, four, and that's actually channel five. So auxiliary one is channel five. And I think channel six, which is auxiliary two, is this one here that we've set up. So this is going to be for my flight modes. And the auxiliary three would have been channel seven. So you can see that happening right there. So you can say like, oh, I wanted this one to be uh, for arming. So we saw that it was auxiliary one that's moving up and down. So we would go to the modes tab and we can find the arm, add range. There's ones that say add link if it's on a newer beta flight version. And then we can set auxiliary one here. Now you're not done yet. So if we flip this, take a note of this little yellow dotted line here. Pro, if, on. if I flip it, then it's gonna go here. However, when it's, you know, either here or here, it still hasn't activated because it has to be within this orange section. So what you can do is grab this and put it to the side. So now we could double check. Engine this is off. Pro this on. is on. That's perfect. Now we could save it. And hopefully that's what I'm telling you. Keep your propellers off because Engine it could just start spinning off. the motors. Pro on. So that's perfect. That's where I want it to arm the quadcopter. Next. We did the auxiliary two for the modes. That's how I did mine. So I would put angle mode. So the reason why I always put angle mode on my quadcopters is because if I have like a, a bee that comes around me or something that's gonna sting me, I would drop it into angle mode, push the throttle, then I know it's leveled and I could, you know, fix myself or push that bee away or whatever. And then I'm able to come back into my acro mode. Um, so that's why I always keep angle mode for myself. Now, what I want it to be, I want it to be on the default off position. So that would be angle mode and that's how I would set it right there. So that's the default off position or default position. It would be angle mode to be on. And if I flip it, 
it doesn't go into any mode. So that is basically acro mode. If there's no mode selected, then it's already in acro mode, which is like um, acro mode. Now, if I wanted to add the beeper like I did with this one here, then I would go add range and that would be auxiliary three. And then I'd move it to the end because I don't want the buzzer to always keep going. I just want it once I flip the switch like this to actually go. And you can actually monitor those two little dots uh, going back and forth. So when I click it, I want that to uh, start the buzzer and save. And basically that's it. You don't have to do anything else. And again, if you forget what does what, then you could just come back to this screen and see, okay, this position was auxiliary three and this position was auxiliary two. And this one was the arm. So you can easily do that and you don't have to worry. And I really hope that helps someone out there. Now, make sure you join my Patreon because I do have a bunch of giveaways, premium giveaways. Even if you missed this one this month, which is in two days, I have the QX7 for new Patreons and uh, Skyzone goggles. And next month is going to be Skyzone OLEDs. So I'm doing a bunch of giveaways on Patreon and it really supports the channel. And uh, I'll have everything here linked down below, all the transmitters. This is my main guy right now. It's like a hundred bucks and um, it's just an absolute beast. And I'll have links to every single receiver that will go with this guy, with, with any of the FR Sky transmitters that we've discussed here. And I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And let me know what you guys think and what you want to see. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.